No, you perfect, man. Yeah. You're good, man. I see you sitting back, though. So. Damn, well, my neck is killing. That's why I'm sitting back. <laughs> so I'm gonna get all on in here. Ready? Hey, it's rolling. Yep. Yo, welcome to the Solutions Not Tip Podcast. We got Fred, the man Durant here, man. Look, three out of four. Start off the year with the big bang, man. We're, we're glad to be a part of the process. Uh, what did it feel like, man? I know you've never been here before, or haven't been here in a while, to say the least. Man, it feels good. That feels good to get the boy out and get him some looks and, uh, you know, have, have judges appreciate the dog and the work that we put in to get him here, you know. Yeah, so, look, Fred and I, we've talked a lot about the breed and the history of the breed and where it's going, what, you know, uh, how we can impact it, things that we believe should change, all this stuff. We're not going to get into all this stuff on here, but, um, you know, on this podcast, this is called Solutions, Not Tip. This guy's got a history of breeding, man. Where should people start when breeding the American Bully? Where should they start? Yeah. Um, just start with a mentor. Uh, start, <laughs> I hear that with, a lot, start with somebody um, that has integrity. Uh, start with somebody who's putting dogs first. Um, start where start where start where the dogs are, not where the money's at. Yeah, that's what I see a lot of uh, a lot of people make the mistake. They they chase the money instead of the dogs, and it really goes the other way around. Because if you got the dogs, the money will chase the dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what happened is you'd be spending your money trying to solve all the dog problems. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wonder where all the money went, right? We're wondering. No, they know where it went. <laughs> they don't know where it went. <laughs> so how difficult it is. I mean, so, you know, 20 years, uh, the bully's been around, 22 years of some change. Um, unfortunately, and this is just my opinion, I'm not going to put him in the same, you know, ideology per se, but uh, part of it, I believe, has been backed into a corner. And in that corner, you're like, you know, how do we get out of here? And get out of here just means how do we breed better dogs? Better dogs that are more competitive so that we have uh, more genes to work with, um, more opportunity to build from, foundationally speaking. What are some things you think we can do moving forward to kind of correct some of the issues that I think uh, mistake-wise have been made? I think the community has made a mistake in focusing on only American bully and not really educating themselves like a lot of bully people, I should say, let me start by saying like, I think a lot of bully people are bully people and they're not dog people. <laughs> so they don't have a lot to compare, you know? Um, and being that the dog is really young uh, yeah. as a breed, um, there's not, there, there's a lot of good examples, but there's not a lot of good examples, you know? <laughs> um, and so when we start comparing them to other dogs that are really athletic, that are really um, capable and able-bodied, you know, established though too, right? Um, yeah, yeah, and established. That, that was the next word I was gonna say. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and established and, and and consistent in that and consistent in those things. Um, then we start to really think, oh man, that dog really isn't athletic. Oh, that dog doesn't really move well. You know, he just moves well for he or she, I should say. Like that dog just moves well um, for that size, but they don't really move well. So I think. Um, I think we can correct this by learning about what dogs are. Not just being a bully person, but being a dog person and really um, educating ourselves in uh, movement, in structure, in ability, in those things. And then work, and then we can have a bully dog around those things. Yeah. You know, I think it'll come, I think it comes first. You gotta, we don't build the walls and then the foundation, we build the foundation, you know, and that structure is what, uh, what sets the foundation, you know? You know, it's funny you say that because I know you've uh, done some coaching in terms of sports and oftentimes you go into any sports program, every team, uh, especially high school level, has those four pillars, right? The, those things that make keep things tradition. So you say, you, you know, that just brought me to the thought. You go, what is traditionally, what are those pillars in terms of building that American bully? Because, you know, the French, he's got 123 years of, of information. Uh, you know, the German Shepherd, Jesus Christ, if you go back and really look at some of those bloodlines, um, I think even Hitler wanted to keep it so pure that they boxed that dog into a corner, which is why you've got that dog that's got some of the worst hips in the world. But he, he wanted to purify even the breed itself. If you really go and do some studying of, of the history of certain breeds, but having um, an overview, if you would, of other dogs, it makes you come back and be a little bit more, in my opinion. You know, I'm a dog man, so I love all dogs, and I want to go see them work, see them do their thing. It gives you more perspective on what you're like, man. I want to add that to my dog a little bit. Yeah, I want to see some of that in my dog, right? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, it, like I said, when we open up our eyes to a dog, to dogs, and not just bullies, and kind of corner ourselves and limit ourselves to what we, what we're seeing and what we're learning, um, like you said, it gives us a different perspective, a broader perspective, and I think, uh, 
a better opportunity and a better chance to learn, you know. Uh, and that's one of the things that, you know, I reached out to this guy, I watched a couple of his, a couple of things on YouTube, I said, man, I gotta talk to this guy. And, um, you know, one of the things you said was that the, the bully itself, objectively, was rooted in working dogs. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at the dog's ability to work and do things, for one, the only way you can work is you gotta be able to move. Mm -hmm. And so, what happens is, I think, even when we're looking at the boxing end of the breed, mm -hmm. if the only place we take the dog, in my opinion, of course, is to basically get in a show ring, and then some of the dogs can't get in a show ring <laughs> without getting over overheated, I think that's kind of an issue. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, a dog should still be a dog. Like, whether it's a bully dog, a German Shepherd dog, a retrieving dog, like, a greyhound, like, a dog still got to be a dog. Yeah, yeah. got to be a dog at the end of the day. So, so what are the four things, if you would, if we to go bring sports translation, what are the four things that you focus on when you're building your dog um, or, you know, your program? I know he's got Primo line is the, is the overall overseer of the, of the mm -hmm. dog, but what are those four things that you would encourage people to implement in their program even? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, for one being um, temperament and a dog is sound mind. Um, because if we don't have the temperament, we can't really do much with it. If we have dogs that are, uh, it, but that ain't sound, you know, dogs that aren't stable, um, dogs that aren't like just genuinely sweet and people loving and have a strong like will to please, then it's going to be really hard to do anything with that dog, yeah. um, especially in a companion breed. Um, I think secondly would, you know, would be the structure and like the, the frame, um, symmetry, uh, balance um, from front to back. Like, you know, shoulder angulation, rear angulation, like, all these things, um, they, you know, the structure, and then, because um, that's what's, that's what's going to, that's what's making the dog move, yeah. um, reach, mobility, you know, those types of things, because um, um, without that, we don't really have athleticism, where it makes it harder for the dog to really do what he want to do, um, it's just like, kind of like a, like a track star to a football player. Like some guys can't run, some guys can run track, right? But they can't run a football because they ain't got no hips. They don't got no movement, right? They don't got no flexibility, no mobility, very, right? Very stiff. You know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Straightforward like, is literally what they are. They yeah, yeah, that's it. That and, that's it. Line. And, um, and it makes it difficult for, for us to do like things we want to do. And the dog wants to do everything. The dog doesn't think that they're limited. Um, so I guess those would be the two first ones. Um, and then building on top of that, I want to say... Um, consistency, um, being consistent with the dog um, in uh, in our house, in our home, around our families, around um, uh, my house. I, I got three boys. We like to have everybody over at my house. Uh, my house is the spot, you know. <laughs> I, I love to have people over. I love to entertain. We love to have our friends and family over. So um, having our dogs around people constantly, having them, you know, on our couches and, and in our bedrooms and, and, and having them around consistently like that and making um, making a lifestyle for the dog and giving the dog a high quality of life and being consistent in that is super important, I think, to... Uh, it helps with the temperament. Yeah, it helps bring out the best in the dog as well. Um, and the fourth, man, it's real tough. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, Put you on the spot here. Yeah, I mean, um, I knew you were gonna. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think, like, so what I say: temperament, structure, um, consistency, and, um, and it, I think that's it, man. I got three. Yeah, I got three for you. I mean, because everything else kind of ties into that. You can kind of put stuff in. Um, uh, and, and consistency, and, and I guess um, a job. Yeah. You know, like you gotta give the dog. I don't want to say a job because it's not a working breed. You know what I mean? But you gotta give this dog some activity. You gotta give this dog something to look forward to. You know? Um, well, but that's the thing. Even the Maltese, the Chihuahua, they're they're yeah. they're dogs that have. I mean, they like tasks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the pug. Yeah. The pug, I mean, this is not happenstance. If you go back and watch certain movies, the pug has got a little, he gives a little order in the home. Yeah, yeah. They, they, you know, they, they, if they have a will to please, yeah. then we got to give them an avenue to please. You there know? you go. There you go. Um, and, and it could be various things. You know I mean? It could be from anything from chasing the ball or um, showing the show ring, uh, it, it, you know, anything. Um, leash training, like, <laughs> you know, anything, man, like anything. But we got to give them something to do. We yeah. Give them something to do. What, uh, what makes the American Bully special to you? Oh, man. The American Bully special to me, like as a breed, um, the versatility. 
Yeah. Um, the fact that and and, and the the American bully, uh, yeah, the versatility in the breed is just what what captures me. I think the the fact that this dog can I lay on the couch with my kids, um, jump in the show ring and do well, um, and then do some bite work mm -hmm. and go on a hike and go swimming at the beach <laughs> in the same day. Yeah, you know, in the same day, it like, should be able to. The, yes, the, the, same day the be clear. yeah, the balance, the the balance, and the um, and the versatility of the dog yeah. uh, when they're bred well, um, and then the way the standard reads it. If if you read read like the temperament, what what these dogs are supposed to be via standard, um, that's what it describes to me as a really versatile dog, uh, yeah. a companion breed. So then, talk, walk them through how you got to Dooley and why Dooley um, is not the pinnacle, but the pinnacle of the Primo line productions. Like, hey. You've done all this work over 10, 15 years yeah. to get to this dog, man. Um, what, what went into that? Why is this dog so special to you? What went into it, man? A lot of hard work, <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of sacrifice. Um, I, I we started. Um, shout out to my brother Pancho Levas. We started with the Grand Champion in Saki Bob, and uh, you know, being one of the best examples of, of a new American bully at the time um, I, I just wasn't willing to settle yeah like, okay this is nice and this is beautiful and this is great but we can still make it better mm -hmm. and, and I'm always that way I'm always looking for something better I'm I pay attention to detail like, I'm really stick with for detail you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and uh, I think that's what really forced me into uh, into into a dog like dude forced me to strive for better and want more um, I didn't want another grand champion. I wanted a better grand champion. Yeah. And when we talk about balance, symmetry, movement, temperament, Dooley is um, in my and, and I say this with a lot of love because I love Saki. Yeah. Uh, but he's an easier dog to manage. I think he's a more correct dog when it comes to the temperament and and um, and, and even the, the build of the dog. Um, I think he's just a little a little. He's just a better dog. Um, but you also got you you got do our Saki later though. Oh yeah, I got Saki at like when he was like four years old, <laughs> and, and still like I I mean I've been I was around Saki from when he was young like a year. Yeah, you know, but like you really you young. you know I know you've done a little working dog stuff. You know how yeah. important building that bond is from day one. Oh yeah, definitely. It definitely. basically sets the tone for the rest of your life to be definitely. clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And and you know what Saki was a, I think Saki wasn't really at home anywhere because he was in one two like three homes and three hands before he was in mine um and so when he got to california that was what really like i think that was his home you know yeah. and and we did build on that we did build like um we did build a, a strong bond like i said i had i had known Saki from from the jump um from the from when Ponch got him and i spent a lot of time around the dog shoot i bought two girls to breed to Saki, and i owned one of his sons before i even owned Saki. you know um so yeah, man, um, it, it, it is important, like the bond is important, but I don't think that it can't, that, that, it, that it's impossible to do that later on with a dog either, because I've experienced it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but selective breeding after that, being really uh, after Saki and seeing that I wanted a better dog, um, and I just wanted more, and I knew that I could accomplish more. Yeah. Um, because I, like I said, I'm paying attention to detail, I'm paying attention to the dog and what, what, we could, what we can have, what I could change about him that could make him more ideal. Um, Selective breeding, being really, really, really uh, selective and not wanting to settle. I mean, we were talking about this 20 minutes ago. I'm yeah. like, I dog, I'm just not going to settle. <laughs> you know. That means you also have a, a lot of experience in basically, uh, you know, choosing right and, you know, going through the kinks. I know we talked about shit with you. Said you've in the past couple, what, a couple years, you you've placed four dogs that you thought could have turned out that didn't turn out because. Yeah. You know, then you said you sold two that were like could have been, should have, could have been, woulda, but. You know, if they're in somebody else's possession, you, you don't always get the right people. If with uh, as many years as you'll be into this state, you, you pray to God to get a dog like Dooley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, no doubt. Um, it, we don't. That's how we learn is from mistakes or, or, or you know, sometimes we learn the hard way. Yeah. Um, I, always, I, I haven't always made the right picks. I haven't always done that. But um, I think what set us apart and what got us here was saying, okay, well, I didn't make the right pick here, and I'm not going to just settle and breed it anyway. Like, I'm not going to breed it out. I'm going to set it aside and not breed it. You know what I mean? Where most people, 9 out of 10 people in this bully community say, oh, well, we can breed that flow out or we can breed this. I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to sacrifice. You know what I mean? Even if it's in my, even if it's my in-house production. 
Yeah. Hey, cause they, if it don't make the cut, it don't make the cut. This is what it is. I'm not just have to cut it, huh? Yeah, they, you gotta make the cut. I gotta be specific. I gotta be really, really. If we're not gonna squeeze oranges and get apple juice. You know what I mean? It don't work like that, man. So if I want something, I really gotta see it in front of me. We're breeding dogs at the end of the day. We're not breeding pedigrees. You yeah. Know? yeah. Uh, paper looks nice, and pedigrees do have an influence. But at the end of the day, we're not gonna get apple juice squeezing oranges. You know. <laughs> So, so why this year? Why, why you know is it that you want to do the uh, run for top dog this year? You've been in this thing for a long time. What makes this year different than any other time? My dog. Yeah. My dog makes things different, man. I haven't had a dog that I really felt like was um, this close to ideal for me. I mean, like we talked about, there's a couple things that I could ch that I would change about Dooley that I could better. Um, uh, but but I think we're pretty pretty close here. I think we're pretty close, and I think the dog has a lot to offer our community. I think the dog has a lot to offer our breed from a gene pool standpoint. You know, um, as a in the bigger picture, looking at the breed as a whole, I think he has a lot to offer. Um, and the dog is, I think he deserves it. I think he he should be looked at. I think he should be seen um, because of those things. Because of, because it's ideal for me. He's a, I'm super proud of him. I'm super proud of where we started and where we come. Um, and uh, and I want to show him off. You know what I mean? I think he deserves it, and um, it, he's worth being showcased. Yeah. Um, so look, the key word, something you just said a second ago, was community, right? Yeah. The challenge with the community is a lot of times people don't want to work together. Yeah. Or or even learn from each other. So where should someone go and get the information they need to better the community, better the dog, and better the breed? I think there's no better way than getting your getting your face out there. Yeah. Really to bring. Yeah, going to the shows, going to, to get-togethers, meet-and-greets, barbecues. I mean, social media is good, right? But social media is only <coughs> social media. Yeah, you know? it's limited. Yeah, it's limited. And, and nine times out of ten, they're not. People, social media isn't showing you the ups and the downs. They're just showing you the ups all the time. And I think people get misled into thinking this is all Cadillacs and Benzes and, you know... Uh, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, I know. And they don't, and that's why you see me in 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 some of these podcasts and some of these in uh, in some of these interviews, like laying it out there, like and in tears, like emotional about it, because I'm like, man, they didn't warn me about what how I was going to feel when I lost my dog. They wouldn't warn me about what was going to happen if I lost a dog early. Mm -hmm. they, they, nobody told me about these things, man. And I think it's important for people to understand, like that this is what's waiting for you, and if you ain't ready for it. Then just don't do it, man, because the dogs are gonna suffer from it, like and you, not just you, but the dogs too, yeah. and and they deserve better, man. So, um, I think getting out and and really diving into the community, because the Facebook tells us one thing, but when we go to a show, and uh, not just a show, but like the right events too. Shout out to Feltis uh, International for hosting some dope events uh, <laughs> while we're in here. Um, I think going to the right events, getting around the right people, and and really getting to know the community. Yeah. Uh, you know, not just from a social media standpoint, but up and up close and personal. Um, and that's where it's at. You, you, you're gonna have to if you want to find our community, you gotta be in the community. Absolutely, absolutely. So, what would be some of your best advice to those people that are trying to um, participate or going to compete? Um, from my understanding, again, I'm not putting you in the position to have to say anything. Um, challenging for others to hear or accept but I know that I've again people I've been to three shows um, ever in the ABKC and first show um, I saw my own issues <laughs> and and then you know the second show um, which was the ABKC Nationals I saw some more issues um, and you know I'll be clear and say I saw some issues yesterday <laughs> uh, we're at this show but this show had a better feel to it in terms of how it was ran, hosted, and the fact that it was running the whole time. Mm -hmm. It started a clock, and that thing was like, boom, 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 boom. It, it was it was moving, you know. It was moving, it had some good energy. So that part worked. Uh, but I know that it can get a little political. So let me ask you this. How do you manage, you know, not getting discouraged and jumping online? Because we did social media component, man. It get, it put people in a, in a bad place sometimes. So... You know, something don't go your way, somebody jump online, lose their shit, uh, talking shit about everybody and their dog and their mama included. <laughs> how how does one manage taking an L in this particular, you know, 15 years of, of putting the dog together and somebody tell your dog ain't shit? That's like cussing, cussing your mama out. It's, it's with a grain of salt because at the end of the day, it's one person's opinion. 
And there's a lot of judges out there. There's hundreds of judges out there. Yeah. And it's one person's opinion. And um, if we're going to get better, then we have to focus on taking that criticism constructively. And really grasping an understanding of why a judge is making this choice or that choice. Um, and I, I have, a, I've had like a dozen people in my ear at times say, "Your dog should have never lost to this dog. Your dog should have never lost to that dog." And I'm like, "Hey, dude, like, it's just one judge." <laughs> and they saw something that you know maybe I didn't. I'm not looking at the other dogs in the ring. I'm looking at mine. I'm having yeah. a good time with my dog. We're getting here focused. And later on, then we can think about that and then understand what I can. What does that dog have that mine doesn't, and what can I work on to get better? Um, focusing on getting better and not focusing on what coulda, shoulda, woulda, because at the end of the day, that ribbon been gone. That trophy's gone. Uh, you know, that, the day is gone. Like, what am I going to do about it now? What is, what is talking smack and getting upset and getting in my feelings do? Where does that get me? It doesn't get me better. It just That's where the discouragement comes from, yeah. when you can't do nothing about it, and then you're like, you can't do nothing about it. Well, yeah, I can if I think about it this way. If I open my perspective, if I change my perspective and I look at it from over here, then, then like everybody else is looking at it like this and they're going, ah, and, and why well, I'm not gonna look at it this way. I'm gonna look at it this way, because if I look at it from over here, all I can do is grow. And there's nothing discouraging about like an L. It's a learning experience, not a loss. It's only a loss. You only lose when it's over. Yeah. And this ain't even close to over. So I ain't losing yet. Like you know, lost. you know, James said this on the podcast the other day. He said that uh, ego is a female trait. What do you think about that? <laughs> ego, a female trait? Without, I think I, think I heard somebody say this uh, named Trevor that said, <laughs> "We ain't only have an ego, and we ain't shit." Like, <laughs> no, no, no. I and, you know, if we don't have an ego, then where, where are we gonna go? Like that's what drives us. You know what I mean? A little, uh, bit, a, a little bit of ego. We have to have some because that's what gives us our confidence. That's what gives us our boost. That's what gives us like <laughs> uh, ego. Isn't it's like fear? Yeah. If we let it consume us, then we're we're assed out, man. We're in trouble. But the ego, we control that, and we control our we control our ego, and we keep it at a, at a, at a healthy level. Yeah. Then we're good. Like we're good. And and I have a problem with that too. Like I've had a problem with it. I'm like this Fred Duran thing in front of the camera. And like you know, in front of the camera and the, the whole Fred, you're Fred Duran, you're Fred Duran. I get this. It's kind of weird. It's weird to me. You know yeah. what I mean? But at the same time, we have to embrace that, man, and and really take our role and claim our role in like leadership. And I'm grateful to be able to be like seen in that light and for people to uh, like appreciate what I've done and, and really uh, for me to be able to be a positive influence in our community. I, I'm here to serve my community. This is my community. These are my dogs yeah. at the end of the day. And, uh, and that ego has to be kept in check, but at the same time it needs to be used too and we need to claim it. Yeah. So I don't, I don't necessarily agree with it, but when it gets to ego and like pride and selfishness and things like that and jealousy sets in, those things, and I agree with James. Yeah. And I had to agree with him, you know what I mean? But we, a man can control it. A, a good man, a strong man should be able to control and, that and, and keep it in check. There's the difference, though, right? Yeah, 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 it's sure. someone who even has a, a sounding board to go back and talk things through with. Word. Because a lot of times, you know, we see, we all do, we see things one way, and then somebody say one thing, I'm like, oh, then that fucking does make sense. I mean, literally one phrase could change how you view things all because you asked, didn't even ask for an opinion, you were just drawing perspective. Yeah. Drawing fucking perspective, man. Well, yeah, and I'm being stubborn in that, like stu stubborn and like setting my ways. If I'm setting my ways and I'm stubborn, and this is how I do things, and this is how I'm gonna do it, and this is just the way I am. Well, then you'll be stuck there forever, brother. So, what would you say is the hardest part about you know embracing this leadership role that you have as well? Because uh, you know I've kept jumping jumping on your head about it, <laughs> and they're like, hey, bro, you gotta just roll with it, accept it, man. And trust me, I've ran from that a long time. I can think of every place in my life, starting as a kid, I wanted to be in the back. And for whatever hat, whatever reason, I'm like, I always get brought to the front. I think the hardest part is like being vulnerable mm. and putting yourself out there and subjecting yourself to criticism. Um, I think that's the, like for me, you know, like I don't want to be torn down. Like I want to be, you know what I mean? Nobody wants to be torn down. Nobody wants to like, because the criticism in our community nine times out of ten comes from a nasty place. It's not like it, it's not like oh I'm trying to help him grow or I'm trying to tell him what he could do it's better. Not, it's not constructive. It's like I'm to yeah I'm trying to put you down so I can look better and and I don't want to be subjected to that because I take it personal man I put a lot of love into this community I put a lot of love into my dog and and this is what I do and this is what I love to do so when somebody just tries to cut it like hey, it's hard like it's hard I'm not gonna front it's hard and, and it's hard not to take it personal because you you know when you put so much into it and you pour yourself into something and you take a lot of pride in it and somebody just comes to cut it down like it ain't. 
like it's some weeds in the yard is, is nasty, <laughs> man. You know what I mean? It's nasty, and, and that's a hard part for me. Yeah. That's a really hard part for me. Um, so I, I guess that's what I would say. I would it's really tell the you, toughest. And I would tell you guys too, man, you know, one of the things I'm going to do later is I'm going to screen record uh, something Jay-Z says, and he says it in a Breakfast Club interview. And a lot of times people get caught up in the hype quick. And then the hype, it, the thing is, it always fizzles out. It always fills up, and then you left with your ass out trying to figure out what to do next. Well, yeah. Well, what what is hype? Hype is hi, hype is building something up to something that it's really not. It's mm -hmm. maybe, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, part of my doing in this a lot of times is building infrastructure. So, you know, I know Fred is a historian of the breed. Um, he was there to see a lot of things change. <laughs> he was there to be a part of some of the change. And every we'll say my pillars, if you would, that I that I kind of put around me. Are people who genuinely add value from the most sincere place and none of us have uh, we're not holding anything over anybody's head and our intent is just to better the dogs mm. so it'll be very difficult long term yeah. for people to we'll say get in yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm even building stuff so that these people are protected because I remember when Jay-Z was asked they go hey uh, Charlotte Bean was like hey you ever thought about doing a, uh, uh, a, a, a reality TV show he, he was like uh, he basically, nigga, don't ask me that. <laughs> he was like, it, it'd take 17 people to even get close enough to ask me something that stupid. And basically, that person would get fired for asking me some dumb shit. <laughs> like, when your value goes up, you can't, by association, we're often branded, right? Yeah. So even when the hate's coming in, if 9 out of 10 of his personal, Fred, Fred, myself, personal experience are based on moments we create, which means we kind of create our own content. And the pers best, one of the best people to really do that is uh, you know Oprah at the own network, right? Mm -hmm. She literally owns <laughs> all of her content, her interviews, everything she does. She does for her and for her her viewers and fans. So you can't you can't make a bad story about Oprah. Like who who got something bad is it? Because she's been the narrator. Mm -hmm. And even in this case, you know my job from a business standpoint is to help my friends and associates create a narration while also providing protection. And making sure that people who so-called want to get in have a place to go and learn, but that they're not bamboozled or haggled by motherfuckers <laughs> who are here for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Because you're not going to get the dogs to make a bunch of money. Nobody that I know really does it for the money. Um, it's purely based on the intent of the dog and seeing how far we can push our dogs. Yeah. And ourselves. Yeah, and I've seen I've seen this through social media where people open openly admit to trying to catch newcomers to do their thing before guys like me catch them. Telling them to do it the harder way without money, yeah. like without chasing money. You'd see people like bottom feeders straight up, like you know what I mean? It's it's wild. And, that, and that's them selling you a dog for ten thousand, telling you gonna sell your your first litter for ten thousand, and you can't even sell a dog for two dollars. They're selling <laughs> dreams. Like, They're you, selling dreams. You got six, seven dogs. You're like, man, just get this fucking puppy out of my house. Yeah. I don't care what it goes for. I'll take five hundred right now. <laughs> yeah, and people just don't know no better, and they take advantage of that. <sighs> It's Friday, man. It's Friday, man. So what are some things you think that the community could do to help, um, you know, the newcomers coming in? <laughs> like, uh, going back to what I said, like, uh, find, find somebody who's doing it well. Find somebody who's doing it for the dogs. Um, but that's the challenge, man. Yeah. I don't, I, I barely found five. Yeah. And I, and I'm, and I feel like if I, when, you know, here soon, we'll all be, we'll literally be sitting at a table with some, some of the historians and the people, in my opinion, uh, over this week, even that are doing it right. That are taking their time, who are invested in the dog. So, and I'm very good at finding things. Yeah. So, so I'm like, I found maybe five in a community where you look at that number on your ABKC registration. There's over 300 plus thousand dog, dogs registered. Yeah. So you got 300 thousand dogs registered, which means there's got to be some history here because mm -hmm. there's data to to prove that this thing is is a functioning or you know some type of machine. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's well oiled, but it's a it's a machine. And in that machine, I found five people who are truly invested in the dogs and in some regards so exhausted by the shit that they've gone through over the years in helping people, they don't want, they don't want to do it no more. They're like, look, I just want to deal with my dogs. Yeah. And I won't be bothered. Chris Moore is one of the guys that people have been like, man, those, those talks to him are crazy. But yeah. you go over Chris' house, he, he, his kid has his phone all the time. So you have to call Gina just to get a hold of Chris and then tell Chris, man, answer your phone. Yeah. And then I go over there because at the time I just literally, hey, get in the car. I need you to come over here and deal with something real quick. Put him on. I just put pressure <laughs> on his ass because that's what I do best. But, you know, he was, it was refreshing for him to be around company, you know, just good company and people yeah. who were interested in the dog, the information, wanted to learn 
uh, versus trying to take, consume, and then manipulate, if you would. Because yeah. then some people will take that information Fred here give you, put you on game, and then manip like fuck the game up. They'll be like, oh, no, you didn't. And it'll sound good because now by association, you'll see the dude with Fred and his value go up. If I walk in a room with Bill Gates right now, it's just like, I think, Sugar Ray or the, little, the dude who fought Floyd one time. The girl was the number one uh, Google thing just because she was like some 22. But point is, is by association, you yeah. walk in with certain people, your value goes up. Yeah. And, you know, it. people say a lot. That we have uh, social media gives everybody a platform, and and we can say this and we can say that, but at the end of the day, like what people do, and, and the actions behind it, and and the resume will tell us who we should and shouldn't be listening to. Because <laughs> somebody can mani try to manipulate what I say or whatever, but what they do is gonna be obviously manipulated. <laughs> it's obvious. It's gonna be obvious. Like yeah. there's some things you can't hide it. Actions speak louder than words, um, and that's. Just, it's a sad truth. <laughs> and and that's, that, that's where my asshole ass comes in. I love a good process. And, and when you look at a solid process, you say, hey, Fred, I said, no, Fred, this is Fred's process. Um, did you ask the person to check all these, these, these boxes, if you would, because that's a lie. You know, we got to have something, in my opinion, to weigh who we are against things. Because yeah. certain things come and be like, that'll never happen. Like even celebrities we don't know, you be like, they'll never do that shit. And it's just not in their nature because it doesn't do anything for their business. Yeah. It doesn't grow them any. So in this case, where I think you have a dog, as I've told you before, who should be in quite a few people's pedigree, I think he's a good foundation dog, as well as a dog, if you, like you said, you want to push him a little bit more to see how much more we could, you know, you could add to him if you would. Yeah. Um, I think he's, he's just a good dog to start it. So, you know, you. and I actually put on uh, an old interview five years ago with, and you know, I'm not a, uh, I'd be very clear, so I'm not a fan of, the president of the uh, ABKC. It's not personal. I don't know him from Adam, but um, I listen. And, you know, that's kind of where I get my, my info. I listen to what he said and something that he said that was real good. You know, the standard and classic dogs are the dogs we need to, it's like our pit bull, if you would. Yeah. They're the ones who we should be building from <laughs> when, we, when we get into those extremities. So a dog like Dooley, which doesn't come around often, it's like a, just a clean ass dog, you know, it's properly built, good, good everything. You go, that's a dog we could do something with. Yeah, I mean, because I, I think he can, he's a, it's got good balance. Yeah. Like, he's still a dog and he can do what dogs are supposed to do. Um, he can do everything that I need him to do. Mm -hmm. um, he fits my lifestyle and a lot of other lifestyles that are um, from active to, you know, low activity. Um, they can do so much. Um, I think he's such a good balance of like a dog, dog, yeah. and and uh, and an American bully. So he's bully at the same time, but he's still versatile. <laughs> I, I don't want to say functional. I want to say versatile. You, you know what I mean? Because um, a dog should be able to function. I hate that people say functionality or function. I I, I say it because it could function. And I only just, say it because I've, I've unfortunately, you know, I was in the ring. I've seen some of these dogs, and I'm. I'm sorry, they just, you know, um, I, I make, I, I look at the AKC and the dogs that are there and the cleanliness and the, the, the fucking process that when you look at the nationals and those big meets that they have, you go, this thing is running. Yeah. It is a well-oiled machine. A whole production. A whole yeah. production. Yeah. And so, you know, when, uh, you know, there's no disrespect to you, but when there's, when there's cooling opportunity in the ring, you go, this, this would never happen there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, I, I mean, mean we have to like I even said, the dog snapping to. yesterday. Oh yeah, hooping and hollering in the ring. They're like letting that happen. These dogs kind of go at it. It would never happen there. Let's walk this dog out of here. This is a sanctuary. At the end of the day, when you step into any ring, you know when it's time to box. That's why there's a referee. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a referee to keep order. Yeah, and order, in my opinion, is how something gets sustained and yeah. grows for that matter. Yeah, um, you know, and I and I get that part too where. You have studs in the ring. These are bull breeds. Yeah. Um, there's gonna be some jaw. There's gonna be some staring. There's gonna be some cows up. You know. <laughs> um, I get that. And then and I get from a judge's standpoint too, where we want to help the dogs through that, so that handlers can come back better. Because mm -hmm. if we just have dogs acting like jerks with each other, and then we excuse them, it, it, or acting like a jerk with the judge and things like that, like you, the judge can't touch him or doesn't want to be touched, and he's squirming and acting like a jerk. And then we excuse him and he goes back into his crate. Well, you gave the dog what he wanted. How's that person going to come back better? Yeah. So I feel like our judges, um, 
our judges. Uh, uh, I've seen I've seen a lot of good judging and a lot of people trying to help uh, with the dogs as well, because uh, you can go. That stuff's not always just taught at home. You know, we can have a dog that acts really well in public, that, that behaves himself really well and trains really well, and then comes out here and something could just set him off, and he just don't want to do it. And we don't want to we don't want to encourage that by just throwing him out the ring and putting him in a crate. Yeah. Because then we just gave him what he wanted and empowered him, you know. And and we at the end of the day we want to help each other. You know, the judges are here to teach and the judges are here to judge too. So um, shout out to the judges doing it with everything they can to to help handlers and dogs come back better. There you go. There you go. Now, how impactful? And I know we have got the wife sitting here and we've talked many times. Uh, you know, how impactful has this dog been on the family as well? Because this is the thing too. A couple of things. I want you to go down this rabbit hole. And then we'll kind of get what will be done here. But um, I know that it's hard for you to relinquish some power, you know, down to even taking the pictures. You know, you've been in control of yeah. the aesthetic, if you would. Trying to be Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you let you let you let me come in and, and you know try to add some value. And then um, you no, know, I know you you show your dog, you drive your dog. It's you and your dog. Been like that for years. The family's now. You like hey. I like where we're at because I can take the family with me. I want them to be a part of. I want to celebrate these these moments of opportunity. You know, all this work basically. Yeah. So so what's that been like? Um, you know, for you getting to this place, and then what type of team do you see yourself kind of building around you so you can continue to work and just focus even more on your dog and family. The the effect that it's had on my family, man. I think the dog has helped me be, and my wife said this like more patient, yeah. more easy, a little more soft. Um, I think it's helped me become a better communicator, you know, with my wife and with my boys too. Um, and, and being that Dooley is, uh, he's an easygoing dog. I don't have to really raise my voice at Dooley to get a reaction from him. He's, he's easy. Um, and he's sweet. So if you're too hard on him, man, he's going to shut down. Um, and just kind of like, some of our kids can be like that too. If you're too hard on him, he's just going to shut down. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that. Um. And the second part, uh, it was the second part of the question that you asked me. Oh, was just, um, fuck. <laughs> what the fuck did I say? Shit, man, we're drawing a blank here. I'm, I'm on E. So. No, you, um, uh, it was about the family and then what, what aspect uh, about traveling and what is it? Oh, yeah, well, you know, as I said, you uh, relinquishing power. I oh, know yeah, one yeah. of the things you said David does well. Oh, the, the circle around me. Yeah, the um, circle around yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I want I want the dog to be uh, to be seen. I want I want the I want to share the dog with the community, um, and I can only do so much with the with stills and with the camera, um, and my skills are limited because I'm a dog guy. I'm not a photographer. I'm not a videographer. I'm, I'm a dog guy, right? Um, I mean, I can take a cool picture, you know, but I'd rather leave that to to, to guys like Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Aaron for these dope photos this week too. They were so so cool. Man. Absolutely, um, they were. Yeah, um, and 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 like and you, man. It, not you didn't try to bring value. You have brought value to the table, and and um, and, and our our stock went like through the roof. People have been able to see my dog in a different light um, because of the work that you do, and I appreciate it so much. Um, as far as like the circle and the team, I've been making it a point to surround myself with men who are strong confident men and men that aren't afraid to tell me fred that's nice but you can do better yeah. because a lot of my community because just i think just the seniority because i've been around for a while that people are like that's dope that's dope and then it makes it easy for a guy like me to settle in that yeah and be like i made it i did it you know and, that, and that's a wrap and just settle but I, like i said i'm not a settler <laughs> like I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not willing to settle, right? I always want to try to get better. I think there's always room for improvement. So surrounding myself with guys like Trev, who I didn't know Trev from, from, from Adam, right? And Trev jumped on me and he's like, hey, dude, that's nice, but we can kill this, man. Like, you can do way better. And, and I'm, like, not used to that. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm not used to that. I'm like, oh, that's uncomfortable. Think, that's even, uncomfortable. Even right? one of the times I told you, I said, bro, he was like, I kind of just want to keep my dog with myself. I said, bro. You got James Brown, man. I'm just like, <laughs> we're going to James Brown him in. I'm like, everybody needs to see Jay Brown. What you mean? <laughs> yeah, no, I just want to, you know, I just want to kind of do my thing. Yeah. And move, move, you know, but, you know, like I said, it was uncomfortable to hear that at first. Like, And I didn't oh. know it, but I, 
I'm 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 bullyish if you would. I'm, yeah. like, I said, I'm like this. Come on, let's go do such and no, such. No, but I need that. You need that. You need to be you know comfortable being uncomfortable for growth. Yeah. You know, and um, growing pains suck, but at the same time, like there's growth. You know, yeah. it's better. It gets better, and that's what I've really focused focus been focusing on when it comes to my circle is surrounding myself with with men who are solid. You know, and, yeah. and men that push each other, <laughs> not just you know not just settling in. Yes, man, and pats on the back. You know, it's like no, it's a push in the back. Yeah. You know, it's a kick in the ass sometimes, and, and I'm with it, man. Like I'm with it. That's how. Yeah. That's how I function. You know what I mean. I need some fire under my eyes. I, 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 I feel like I do my best under pressure. Yeah, and and I've seen it, people. Like I said, I, I've only been around briefly, and yeah. and I think you know even some of the conversation we have opening your mind. And I don't, I would never say that he was closed mind. I just like, I think you know, Fred's. You probably take things and process them, and you know what, that makes a lot of sense. And then you know, I know you had a very unique story, and we've already captured it on Troopies podcast, and him and I've done lives about. How do we even got to that grand champion status and then getting into the ABKC Nationals and the like basically in six months, if you yeah. would, if realistically, it's like 10 shows. It's some, like it was less. Yeah. Like <laughs> and five or six, six events or something like five events and then Nationals, it was really green. It, yeah, green yeah, green yeah. Stage. And then, and then get a, and that in itself, a little fire in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh shit, leave the lights. Yeah, there's 150 people around the ring. Like, yeah. Here's all the lights, the cameras, the whoa, you know. Oh, I'm in a suit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like whoa, yes. all right, let's and, do it. And even the clarity you had at the national event, knowing like you know whatever happens here, my first my, sh the next week is the this show, and we're gonna be at that show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, don't stop here. This is the beginning. Absolutely, and yeah. here we are again in January. You know, starting off with another punch in the mouth. Hit, man. It. Starting to starting with a banger, you know. Way to way to start the year, man. Thank you. Three and, best in shows. Yeah, thank you, and thank you guys for coming out and taking the time to, to um, you know, to capture this stuff and, and really coming out and bringing the value, man. Uh, you know, <laughs> um, and and supporting me because the support has has been a game changer for me. Yeah, uh, it really has, man. Because like I had said before, before this last year. Uh, my family weren't at shows. My family wasn't at the shows. My wife wasn't at shows. It was me and the dog, and that was going in. Um, and so now to have this, um, the support at the shows, and to have my friends and my family like with me, it's just it's a different um, it's a different level. Like I just one less thing I have to worry about, I guess. You know, um, and, and celebrating. I think uh, my friend Brittany Brittany Burns last night. She said like, um, you know, it's cool. Like to go to the shows, I used to go by myself, and then when I come home and say, look at what we won. And, and it was like, cool, <laughs> you know, <laughs> opposed to being there and seeing it. And now my kids are like on the side, of, like at the, at, on the show, at the show ring, like, you know, on the fence, looking and paying attention and yelling and clapping. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's fun, man. It's a different level of excitement and it's a different level of joy to have that support. You know, yeah. it's, it's great because I never celebrated until I got back to the house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Never really got to celebrate until I got back to the house. Everybody, good job. Like, great. Congratulations. And, but until I do, like, I see the faces that are really, like, the most important to me and my kids and my wife. Yeah. That's what does it. That's yeah. the win. You know, I, I'll bring trophies home, but until I get home and see those faces and those smiles, like, that's where the win's at, you know. And that's, For me, at least. Hey, that, I mean, objectively, we all do better when we have, uh, I think, you family provides a level of pressure, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you ain't gotta please them, but you do want to make sure that you. Yeah, you want to make them best. proud. Yeah, you want to make them proud. Yeah, you don't want to let nobody down. I think that was one thing for me that was a uh, like when we were at nationals. I want to talk. I wanna, I'll tell you about it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, after we didn't uh, we didn't take the grand and uh, we didn't take the grand the grand class. I was like, man, we had I had my wife, um, uh, my friend Alfred, and uh, and his wife Irene. Um, shout out to eight hundred five elite. Yeah, that's my family out there, and um, uh, my brother, uh, my brother who actually is my my kennel partner, Anthony Sana, and and Dayton Pinaloza were there with me, and and my brother Mike G was there with me, and um, you know when I when we didn't when we didn't get the outcome that we that we hoped for, I wasn't discouraged because I didn't win, or I wasn't upset that I didn't win, I just felt like I let them down. Yeah, and it was like dang, it was hard on me for about I don't know a minute and a half. Until I looked, and until I looked around, you know, and I was like, "Wait, this thing ain't." No. I had already like took off my shirt, like by unbutton. I was like, "Man, I was sweating, like, oh, like ready, like ready to cry," because I felt like I let my family down. Yeah. I said, "There's still opportunity here. We're not done. Like, yeah. this isn't finished. You know what I mean? This isn't finished. So why am I? Why am I feeling like this?" And I put my tie back on, and I went out there, and 
cheer for my friends. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And cheer for my friends. And we can still be that support for somebody else because they're not going to let us down. They didn't let us down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's not a letdown. All we can do is go out there and give it our best and, and hope for the best outcome. And when it doesn't come out the way we hope, well, what are we going to make of that? <laughs> you know, and I'm going to make the best of it because I'm here to have fun at the end of the day. I'm here to, you know, give by, give give back to my community and support. So there you go. grateful for that. I'm grateful to, to that God has given me the heart to, to see those things and, you know, that, that clarity. Um, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Like I said, I'm always happy. I'm just happy to be here, Trevor. <laughs> you and me both, man. I mean, I, I've already done a lot of things I said I wasn't going to do all because these fucking dogs, eh? And, yeah. yeah. And, and really, it's it's more so I'm, I've, as I've reached out before and into some others, and we talked to Aaron last night about it. We'll talk some more with these guys. But, you know, I said we'll be here longer than these dogs, unfortunately. Yeah. And I think it's important that we build a community of communication along with just help. Yeah. You know, we could reach and have conversations. We all kind of check on, check in on each other, you know, every so many weeks and just talk regularly. Um, and, you know, it could be life, could be dogs, could be family, could be could be anything. But at the end of the day, you know, we're here for something way bigger than ourselves, if you would. Yeah. And the only thing I'm thinking about is, you know, how do I continue to showcase, you know, what, what Fred and, and others can bring to the table? Because I, too, um, you know, need guidance and help. And I know quite a bit, but that just, you know, the more you know, the more you realize you know nothing. So, yeah. you know, vicariously being supportive for the camera, seeing how things go, learning, being a part of the process, it helps me continue to see the value and really what can be done from a business standpoint, but just make sure that I dab my eyes and cross my teeth so nobody gets screwed. <laughs> that's, yeah. that, that's my thing. So uh, tell them where to find you, man. Oh, uh, Facebook, Fred Duran. Um, uh, uh, Instagram is uh, Fredito. P H R E D I T O. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how you uh, spell it. And yeah, I mean, you can find us all over the X Dog social media. <laughs> Shout out to X Dog for making this weekend happen for us. Yes. Um, we're super grateful. Thank you, Stan, and the whole team out there. Um, it, 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 the support is real, and uh, we really, really do appreciate it. Hey, that's what we're here for, man. Uh, you know, as he says, uh, a better dog. Well, Caesar says, you know, better, better human or better, better human or better dog. And yeah. I think as long as we all strive to be better humans, our dogs will always be better. Oh, yeah. Okay, Definitely. people. Well, solutions, not tips, people. We just got killed an episode with Fred Durant. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, uh, point out anything you want to hear us talk about as we continue to walk in the future. This is going to be a hell of a week we got coming up. Monday, we will have... Ron Papa Pitt. <laughs> Ooh, Uncle Ron. Uncle Ron. <laughs> on, on the podcast, man. And, yes. you know, we'll get Sergio about that. We'll get some good people, man. Some some people who really love dogs. Um, I'm being very strategic this year. I'm either talking life when nobody's around and or, or dogs. Yeah. <laughs> those two things in business. Um, those are the things that kind of drive me a little bit. And then only sitting down with people who add value. Yeah. I don't care who you are, who you think you are. <laughs> Thank you. At some point, yeah. we will we will get to a place where people want to hear a little bit more about you know what we have to say. And uh, Fred, someone who I've told him many times, man, uh, you got something to say, and some people need that. I know I did, thank and you. do for that matter. So, thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your process, your plan, and just help. That's thank all you. I've ever said. Hey, man, thank I'm just you. gonna help, man. Thank you <laughs> for got... having me. Thank you. Thank <laughs> nope, you for having nothing me. Nothing else. I just here to help, that. man. So, uh, signing off, people. <laughs> I'll read. Appreciate it, man. That was a good one. Aaron's over there. He's doing, he hit the sway. A couple times. He hit the sway. I'm going to 